Hi, I'm Mike. I'm a respiratory therapist, and today we're going to go over how to set up a cool aerosol, also known as a large volume nebulizer or bland aerosol therapy. So there's several reasons we might do this. Uh, we can provide oxygen and humidity to a bypass upper airway, so we can hook it to a trach or an uh, ET tube. We can also provide a cool mist for any time there's upper airway swelling or strider or something like that to help provide comfort and re relieve that inflammation. We can also use it to thin out secretions. So there's lots of different uses. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our sterile water bottle. We're gonna take the Christmas tree off of the flow meter. Now we can hook this to uh, air, in which case you would be delivering room air aerosol, or we can hook it to oxygen. And so we're gonna hook it to oxygen in this case. And I'm gonna make sure it's easy to cross thread this, so I want to make sure it's nice and secure and straight. I'm gonna set this at 30%. You can set it all the way up to 100%. And basically it pushes oxygen through the system and pulls room air in at a very specific rate. So it mixes the oxygen flow with the room air. It doesn't matter what you set the flow at, the FiO2 is exactly the same. If you turn the oxygen up, it just entrains more room air to mix very precisely to deliver a specific FiO2 at the other end. So we have our uh, aerosol bottle set up here, hooked to the flow meter, dialed in. We're gonna get a length of corrugated tubing. And this stuff comes in a roll. It's kind of uh, curly, curled up. So I like to stretch it out some. And and hook it to our aerosol bottle and we can cut this stuff too it comes has little sections here and we can flatten it out and use our scissors and cut lengths of it if it's too long because what's going to happen is this is going to get some condensation it's going to get some rain out and so water will build up in here and I'll go over shortly with you what happens when when that occurs so we're gonna put our drain bag here, and we want the drain bag to be at the lowest point in the whole system. That way water runs down to it. We wanna make sure our drain bag is pointed downward. So if we connect it and it's sideways, it's not gonna collect water, and the water's gonna sit in the tubing. So sometimes you gotta work with it a little bit. And we have this little zip tie, and we we're gonna go ahead and hang that on the bed. Now you don't wanna hang it on anything that moves because if you hang it on the railing and you put the railing up, then it doesn't, it's not the lowest point anymore. Now I'm not gonna hook this to the bed right now because I want you to be able to see the setup. So we're gonna put the other end of our corrugated tubing on there and we'll just go ahead and give that a quick stretch. Okay, and at this point we'd, we would attach this to the bed, but I'm just gonna let it hang for our purposes today. Now that we have the circuit set up, we're ready to put a patient interface on it. Again, there's lots of different things we can do. A very popular one is a trach collar. So when people come off the ventilator, a lot of time, or we're just doing a, a spontaneous breathing trial off the ventilator, or if they come off for good, we still need to provide oxygen and humidity for the bypassed upper airway. So we can put a trach collar on there, and this just fits over the head, and fits over the trach like that. Now the advantage to this is that it's pretty comfortable as long as it's not rubbing. A disadvantage is that it can move and pull if the patient's moving around a lot or if it's not on secure enough. But other than that, it's a really good way to interface to the patient. We can also do a T-piece. We just get a standard T-piece and we're gonna put a little reservoir tubing on there and hook it to that. And this has a 15 millimeter inner diameter, so that'll fit on any endotracheal tube or trach tube. And so you could put it on the trach. And the advantage to this is that it's stable. It doesn't have a lot of movement, so that's good in some ways. But if the patient is moving too much, it can pull on the trach. If the patient has a very large neck that's going to come out and cover the trach, then this will be good to put in there and you can make sure that they get their oxygen and humidity. The reservoir tube 
is to provide a more stable FiO2. So when they breathe in, if we didn't have this, then they would be pulling in some extra room air, diluting the FiO2 and losing some humidity. But with the reservoir tube, when they breathe in, some of the humidity and oxygen is collected in there and they pull that in. So it's a lot more stable than the other. If we need to provide just an aerosol to thin secretions or to provide comfort with upper airway swelling or strider, we can do an aerosol mask or we can do a face tent. And so there you go. You can put that on our patient and this is really nice for not having a mask over their face and it just kind of blows up on there. But obviously in train a lot or you know bring in a lot of room air around it so FiO2 isn't as stable with this. Okay and once we're all set up we can go ahead and turn it on. I didn't turn it on before for noise purposes. And to determine what setting you put it on the rule of thumb is you want to be able to provide two to three times their minute ventilation. Now we could calculate the total output of this system mathematically not within the scope of this video to do that today, but it can be done. Or you could just set it to where you see mist coming out and when they breathe in, the mist doesn't completely disappear. And that's a pretty good quick way to determine if your flow is set high enough. Now that our system is running, we are delivering 30% cool aerosol. And in this case, to a trait. Now, let's talk about what happens when water builds up we said before it should go into the drain bag, but sometimes it doesn't, it builds up in other places. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some water in here. And I'd like you to listen to the noise that it makes. I'm just gonna pour, I'm gonna simulate some condensation in here. water gurgling and the noise of the jet changed as well. So there's a very different sound here. Now what this will do is create back pressure in the system. Now that oxygen flow meter is going to push the oxygen through, but I'm going to make this quiet so you can hear me better. It'll push the oxygen through, but the back pressure will actually keep air from being entrained. So what happens when you hear gurgling is an actual higher FiO2 is delivered to the patient. Because again, oxygen makes it through, you can hear it gurgling, but it does create back pressure. So the room air is not entrained, gives a higher FiO2. And what you'll notice is, if you were to look closely, uh, there's no way you could see it on video, but it's actually spitting aerosol out of these entrainment ports. And when that happens, it's going to make the floor wet. So typically, when you get a call or you, that there's water on the floor, or you notice there's water on the floor, and you hear that kind of louder sound, you can bet that there's water in the tubing. So again, this is going to, gurgling water is going to deliver higher FiO2, but if there's so much water in there that it's totally blocking, there's no gurgling, there's nothing getting through there. What's going to come out here is nothing, so they're actually on room air, and their sacs may drop. So the fix for that is to drain the water. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drain that down into the bag. And there we go. Now it's quiet and that's back again. Now if you wanted a higher aerosol output, this does have a, a metal surface to it. You could put a donut heater over the top and plug it in. You could provide a heated uh, humidity aerosol, but we typically usually just do a cool aerosol. Now if you wanted to put a nebulizer in line, say you had to deliver a, a breathing treatment, and I'll just put my trait collar back on here. What we can do is go ahead and cut this at this joint right here. And what we do, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can 
you can just tee a nebulizer into there. We have these nice little spring-loaded valve ports, and so right now there's no air coming out of there. But if I wanted to run a nebulizer, I could. I would just put the nebulizer right in there. It opens the valve, it unseats it, and the nebulizer medicine comes up and just follows the stream of gas to the patient. So that's a pretty nice way to do that. And you're not breaking the circuit. But again, if you don't have one of these spring-loaded T-piece ports, you can just T your regular nebulizer, but it's gonna have you breaking the circuit. So whatever the policy is where you work. And that's the end of our setup.